So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I choose fabrics and um, putting different colours together. We are filming this in my store. We're so excited to be out of lockdown. I couldn't resist sort of being here and being surrounded by the fabrics while I'm talking about them. So there might be a little bit of background noise, um, you know, going on. I think how I choose fabrics and put fabrics together in a project is the question that I get asked the absolute most out of anything people ask me. Um, I, for some reason, and I'm not sure why, people doubt um, their ability to choose fabrics. I sort of always say to people, think back to when you were a child and how you coloured. Like, children don't worry about what goes next to each other. They'll just pick up their crayons or their pencils and they'll just colour with great joy. But somewhere along the line, as we get older and all these sort of man-made rules get applied, e.g., you know, I always remember my mother saying blue and green should never be seen without another colour in between. And we all know that that's rubbish because Blue and green quilts look absolutely fantastic together. And then there's the old pink for girls and blue for boys thing. Some person made up that rule. So there are so many different man-made rules that we sort of have stuck in our mind and we try and apply them. I'm not a great user of the colour wheel. I know a lot of people, that really helps them. And if that is what you need to use to help you choose fabrics, by all means, go ahead. But you've also got to remember that a person made up that colour wheel. Like someone made that colour wheel with complementary opposites, etc., etc. So it is still a mat, you know, some person's opinion of colours that should, should work well together. So colour is just, remember, such a subjective thing. You will like something different to what I would like, and that's the beauty about quilting and about. Um, scrap quilting is that we can use so many different things in the one project. So while I don't use the colour wheel, I do use the mother nature theory to um, choosing colour and that's if you look at a, you know, wildflowers in a meadow, everything is in there. There are reds beside pinks and yellows beside purples and you know there are just so many different colours in that um, meadow and it looks fantastic. All you do is admire the beauty of it. You don't pick to pieces that, that certain colours are next to each other. So when I'm sort of choosing, and sometimes I honestly can't answer the question because I'm not quite sure why I choose two things to go side by side, but just to me they feel right. But I always think you need some sort of, I call it tension for the want of a better word, you need something in that quilt that is going to just provide visual interest. Um, I rarely make a quilt that's like so perfectly coordinated because that, that's not appealing to me and while it might be appealing to many, many other people, I prefer something that's got a little bit of, I guess clash would be another another word that you could use. So, you know, I think you've got to stay true to yourself. I think the hardest customer that I have in my store is the customer that comes with her best friend, who is the expert at choosing colour. And while the person choosing the fabric has picked exactly what they like, their best friend chimes in and says that you can't put this with this and you can't do this and that. And then the person who's chosen those fabrics to begin with starts to doubt her ability to choose fabric. And that's, that's not right, you know, to her eye that's what looks great and she should run with that. So that's just sort of a little bit of my philosophy behind how I choose fabrics. Of course, I always use the Freddie Moran theory and that's that 10 fabrics don't work, but 110 do. So that's another way that you can put more, more, more in there. But I just thought I'd run through a couple of options. I'm going to get um, Margie, one of my staff in the store, to just pick a fabric off the shelf and then I will show you how I go about um, working with that fabric and adding other fabrics to get us you know, a relatively coordinated look. So I've gone ahead and just cut some strips of the fabrics that, that I've chosen. So this is the one that Margie um, pulled. I always suggest if people are having trouble, co you know, getting a scrap bundle together, that they start with a focus fabric that, that has a few different colours in it, because it's always easier than trying to work with a, you know, 
a, a really coordinated, maybe just sort of two tones of red or something like that. So this one's got several colours in it. And I've gone ahead and just, I've chosen what I like to, to call tier one, which are fabrics that have um, mainly the colours that are in this focus print. So for example, this is what I would classify as a yellow fabric to go with the yellow in the print. And then I have a teal or aqua or um, whatever colour you choose to call this, which once again refers back to a colour in the original print. And a green. <clears throat> which also relates to the original print, and an orange. All right, so I've picked up the orange in the original print. So those fabrics, I would class them as tier one. So the main color in the fabric is going to relate back to that, that original print that we've chosen. But what you'll find then is in these fabrics, there will be other colours that aren't represented in this original fabric. So for example, in this green fabric, we have got some purple flowers, which there are no, there is no purple in the original print. And then in this orange print fabric, we've got some pink and some red. Just a little hint of it in the orange fabric. So now we can move on to what I call tier two where I'm going to start adding in some of these, the colours that are in these um, T1 fabrics. So for example, I've chosen a purple fabric. Now I'm just choosing these fabrics randomly off the, the wall in the shop. They're from many different fabric companies from many different designers. So there's no, I've purposely not gone um, with a motor fabric for example because I just wanted to show people how you can pull you don't have to work with one range so these are just an absolute mix of all sorts of things and then um, I'm going to pick out the pink the little dot of pink that's in that orange fabric now of course no pink in the main fabric at all then we have this um, fantastic stripe here that has got a little bit of purple and a little bit of the the tealy colour in it which will work really well. Another orange based fabric but now it's got a little bit of um, the hot pink in it that I've bought in from this fabric here. Now that we've got those colours in it I'm going to get really daring a little bit of black that is certainly in the print up here at the top but now I've brought in some of the hot pink and the oranges and now I'm just going to start working in a few more fabrics that are going to go the main print has got a lot of black in it so this is a print that has got really nearly all the colours now from tier 1 and tier 2 with a black and white background so that one's going to tie a whole heap of these together and then just for a bit of fun I've thrown this one in the mix which is very different to all of them but I still would use that and I think it would work really, really, really beautifully in with the rest. So that's where I'd start. Of course, once you get down and you've got, you know, a dozen fabrics or so mixed together, there will be all sorts of colours now in tier two that you can start adding in. And so long as there's a visual reference back to something else within that, you know, the fabrics you've chosen, they will work. So I just wanted to show you um, with this main print, if I had have started with this one as the first print that I chose to work with this one, you would all think I was absolutely crazy. But once I'd put all the other fabrics in between, these two work together perfectly. Even though when you look at this, other than black and maybe a little bit of the orange, although it's a, quite a different shade of orange, um, 
there's not a lot that happening in this one that's happening in this one, but with all those other fabrics in between, these two will work. So if I'm making a truly scrappy quilt, I will choose fabrics as I was doing with the last um, bunch. But if I'm going to do a quilt, even though the quilt behind me, which is my diamond exchange quilt from my quilt recipes book, um, even though it's scrappy, it is a much more coordinated um, pool of fabric because I want each diamond to have two fabrics that work really, really well together. So what I would do with that is I would choose two incredibly coordinated fabrics. So for example, I would put say these two together and then for the next diamond, I might choose these two and put them together. And I know that they're going to work beautifully. Now, I'm still going to get that incredibly scrappy look because when you've made each diamond, I don't worry, when I make diamond one and diamond 95 or whatever, however many there are in that quilt, um, I'm not worrying that di you know, diamond number one and diamond number 90 are going to look nice next to each other because I just make them making sure that the fabrics are well coordinated and then I go to my design wall and I will put the diamonds up on the design wall and I'll just keep moving them around until I've got a lovely even mix and balance of contrast and colour and print value um, and you know I'll make sure that two, there aren't two diamonds sitting next to each other that don't look nice together. So that's how I sort of um, approach a quilt with a much more coordinated look about it. Um, the other thing to remember is, you know, a design wall is such a valuable thing to have because to stand back and look at the perspective is a really interesting. Even if you lay your quilt out on the floor, um, looking down on it gives you a very different look to standing back and looking at it. And so I put almost everything I make goes on my design wall and every time I walk in and out of my studio I'll swap a couple of blocks around or, you know, just keep moving things until I've got them in, in the right spot. The other thing to remember are those design principles and you would do it in your home. If you had an incredibly neutral room and you were wanting to inject some colour into it, e.g. let's say red for example, um, you wouldn't just put one red item in the room, e.g. one red cushion on the couch, because when everyone walks in, all they're going to do is look at the sofa, look at the red cushion, it's going to draw your eyes straight away. So what you'd need to do is maybe, you know, choose say three red things and it might be a cushion on the sofa, some red in the print that you're going to have on the wall and, you know, then there may be a red vase or something like that in another corner. And what that's going to do is lead your eye around the room and that principle applies to colour in your quilts as well. If you put all your darks in one corner, your eye is going to be drawn there. Or if you've just got a little bit of one colour and you group it in one area, your eye will be drawn. You need to mix that around the entire quilt so that the eye gets led around. So once you get to the design wall phase, it's really fun then to start playing and making sure that it's all looking really evenly balanced. So I hope that helps a little bit with how to choose fabrics. Um, I guess my real advice is just choose what you love. Don't let your best friend tell you it doesn't work. If you think it does, just go for it. Um, throw in a few extra fabrics, as I said, the more the merrier, and just have fun.